I've been asked to show you how I have been making face masks. These are soft and delightful, nice to wear, easy and comfortable to make. So this one here is a medium face mask and these up here are larges. And you can see when I stack them on each other that this one here, it's a little bit shorter than the large. Now, it doesn't look like much, but the people who have been trying them really say there's a big difference in the feel. So generally small frame, I've been using the medium size and for a fuller face like mine, I've been using the largers. So I have the measurements here for you and I will share those with you. So the large face masks are nine by six with an eight inch loop and the medium are eight and a half by six with the same size loop, and this can be adjusted if you need to. And the child's are five by seven with a smaller loop of seven inches. And of course, you can adjust any of those measurements according to the face that you're fitting. I've gone through my stash pile, and I have found a selection of cotton fabrics, which I have cut into the large sizes. And the inside of the mask is made with flannel. The flannel gives a real nice soft feel to the inside of the mask. The other thing that's important about the flannel is it adds an extra layer of filtration. So it's not as thin as the cotton. I found that when I was getting my fabric out, a quarter of a yard worked really well, and I wanted the the length to measure 18 inches. That way I could get two cuts out of the fabric. So you can see I have all of my mask cut liners ready to go, and we will take this to the sewing machine. Oh, I just thought before I take it to the sewing machine, I want to show you what I'm using for my ear loops. I am using what they call elastic cording. It's almost the same as the material used to make hair ties. I like it because it's, it doesn't have any flat edges like elastic might have. And so it has a real nice feel around the ears. Now that I have my stack of cottons and my stack of flannels ready to go, I'm going to lay the cotton and the flannel side by right sides together, and I'm going to sew along the long side of the mask. Now what I'm doing is I'm, I have finished sewing the long edge of the the mask and I've done assembly line so the first stitch that I make I'm just going all the way down this edge here now the next one I make I'm going to do the same thing but I'm going to leave about a two inch gap so that I can turn this right side out so here I I'm done some assembly line sewing you can see I have my masks back here. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm gonna show you a couple times how I do it. So I'm just gonna sew down a couple of inches, do a little back stitch to tack it, and I'm gonna cut my thread in the middle. I take about three finger widths apart, just so I can guesstimate. That way I'm not frustrated with different hole sizes. Then I bring it down, do a little back stitch, and voila. So now I'm, I'll show you again. I think this one might be a little easier to see on. So I just stitch down a little bit here, do a little back stitch, do a little back stitch. Skip about three fingers width. Doesn't have to be exact. Nothing has to be pinned or measured. And here I go and I finish this side as well. So give that, cut that off. Get my fancy cutting gizmo so I can be quick with this. One, 
two, three, voila. I'll work on those later. So now I'm going to get my ear loops ready for us. Ear loops are made with eight inch fabric. The ear, loop, ear loops are made with eight inches of looping. This is the elastic cording. So here's my scissors. I'm just gonna roughly cut off eight inches here and eight inches here. Good enough. I'm gonna put a quick knot in the ends. Here's a knot and here's a knot. Easy stuff. Now I wanna grab my pins and pin these guys in place so they don't shift on me. Here's my here's my sewn piece. I'm going to drop this in here. Make sure it's tied up against the seam. A little pin to hold it in place. If you don't have the cording, no big deal. You can use elastic. And then come down here, squish that down in there. Voila, easy peasy. That's the word for the day, easy peasy. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a quick seam down the side. Take my pin out. And these are really nice because they fit. They fit the edge so well. Eight inches is good. I'll go ahead and pin the next one in. I'll put it on pause so you don't have to watch me do this, but I'll get it ready. Now that I have my ear loops all sewn in, I'm going to go ahead and birth it, which just means to turn it right side out. I'm going to find my hole, my little gap that I left on the side, and I'm going to put my finger right up into the corner nice and tight and pull it through. That's one corner done. And then I'm going to push the, the short end through first, and then I'm going to tuck in all of the rest of the ear. I, face mask. Give that a little tug. That does two things. It pulls out my corner nicely and it helps me get this turned quicker. They take a lot longer than you than you would think they take. If you're making a lot of them, it can really add up. So I'm going to take this to the sewing the ironing board and I'm going to give it a quick press. I just use some moist fingers and roll it out. I have the water on my ironing board and then I can get it nice and square. Be right back. Now this is where the fun part begins. Now you can see that here's my opening and I just pressed in the edges at a quarter inch. I'm not even going to worry about them. I'm going to pin it so that you can see where it's at but it doesn't really matter. So now when I fold this I'm looking to fold it in sixths because we're going to make three folds to make the mask. So I go about one third of the way down and then I fold it up. So I fold down one third, not even quite one third, just a scant one third. We always say scant, it's funny, just less than. And I'm going to put a pin here and a pin here. I'm going to stay away from the edges so that it'll be easy to sew the edges. And now I'm going to do the same, put my thumbs right about at the third mark, and then I'm going to pin up, fold, and then pin up. Now it doesn't really matter, but I'm just very picky. I like to keep my folds exactly like I just showed you because this 
broad part up here is is opposite the side with the birthmark and that's nice because then if for any reason it doesn't line up e equally then it won't be along the eye line where people look at your eyes so now you can see that my edges they they butt up against each other see how they do that it's nice and smooth. There's no overlap in the folds. And that might take a little practice. It ends up measuring approximately um, between two and a half and three inches. Three inches is kind of my gauge. This one is at two and seven eighths. It really doesn't matter. The most important thing is that you've got nice folds in there and they're not overlapping so that looks good so now to finish this mask up i am going to just quickly sew a quarter inch around the edge now the nice thing is those elastic cording i can just sew right over those knots once i get close to the pins i can move the, i can move them out of the way but i don't necessarily need to just because they're not in my line of sewing anyway here i go actually you know what i'm not sewing at a quarter inch i'm sorry along the bottoms and the tops i'm really sewing at an eighth of an inch because I like the top stitching effect. Now this is good. So here my knot's giving me a little challenge. So I'm just gonna take the ear loop here and I'm gonna give it a little tug and that helps me get through the sticky parts because sometimes that thickness can be problematic when you're sewing, but no big deal. Just walking my foot here, ta-da. Take this out so I can relax this a little bit. Very nice. Happy, happy. Give my little ear, ear loop a tug here. Gorgeous, there it moves along nicely. And we have finished our first face mask. What do you think of that? Very nice. Thank you for watching.